You sure? Because yeah. I can play. I know. You're going to go to the two times here. First time she plays, second mm -hmm. time I play. What's the name of the song again? Um, well, it says 23 and then it says the 23 and then And then it's Psalm 23, verse 4. So it's two different psalms. Yeah, the second one just is a little bit too different. Yeah, it goes into Yay, the Let's try, the, let's try the first part first, because that's... Well, I'm going to do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah we'll, just, we'll just do a acapella. Okay. Then we'll practice this more. This is going to be a ghost. I love this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. You ready to start? <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Glad to see everybody here in church this morning. And uh, so we have a special treat for you for the whole day. We got Brother Kaiser, the vacation Bible school king himself, has come to Kensington, Philadelphia. And it is going to be a good day in the Lord. I hope you guys have prepared your hearts to worship. You know, we get dressed in the morning. We make sure the tie's straight, the suit's nice. You ladies are making the hair and the war paint all good. But we got to prepare our hearts, right? The war paint just got myself in trouble. I hope my wife isn't listening. But uh, so, yeah, we're glad to have Brother Kaiser here with us this morning. And uh, so let's do this. Let's stand. We're going to sing a scripture song, and then we'll, uh, we'll do some prayer. And then Brother Kaiser is going to come and give us a, a lesson from the Word of God this morning. All right, so we are going to sing. This is technically two psalms blended together. We, we used to do this all the time over at Solid Rock. I don't know how many other churches do this, but who was here Thursday night? Remember the, song, the scripture song? We sung Thursday night, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. So it's Psalm 48 verses one through two, and then you jump straight from that with the same harmony uh, straight into Psalm 23 verses four and five, and the verses, Lord willing, will be up on the screen. So if you'd stand with me, and we'll sing from the heart to the Lord. All right, whenever you're ready, Brother JR. There we go. All right, here we go. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comforteth me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Brother Jared, leave that verse up on the screen for a second, the last one we just sung there. Um... Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, but then, wait, no, the verse before that, sorry. Um, yeah, it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I feel like we, we read that, we sing that, and we don't even really think for a second what exactly that means. But a shepherd uses a staff, he uses a rod, and what's he do? He prods the sheep with it, right? He prods them. What's that doing? It's, it's a rod is a rod of correction. So David is essentially saying, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's saying, Lord, when, you, when I get out of line and you in love correct me, that, that's a comfort to me. As a child of God, we, we, we shouldn't, you know, we should have this idea of like when we're being corrected that, that it's a comfort because, because it's for our good. You know, um, I think it's Psalm 119, 175, the Bible says, um, I know this verse. I, this is one of those verses I have memorized. I've had this verse memorized for years and now drawing a blank on me. Psalm 119, 
Brother Kaiser, is, does that happen more and more as we get older, or how does how does it work? <laughs> Psalm one night. <laughs> well, I'm 35, so I'm halfway to my three score and ten, amen. But yet, yeah, Psalm. <laughs> I'm 35, but my knees and my back are 55, amen? So, <laughs> but no, the verse is this. Um, it's Psalm 119, 75. Uh, David said, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. So like God, you know, and in Hebrews, it talks about that he, he does it for our pleasure or for, he, he does it for our profit. When, when God corrects us. So it was just a verse that just came to me. I was thinking about it. And, um, you know, uh, you know, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. But I'm so glad that we've got a, we've got a God that, that, that is not just a shepherd, but he is the good shepherd. And when we go astray, he takes that staff, he just pulls us right back in. Amen. So thank God for the Lord. All right, so let's um, let's quickly go through some prayer requests. Anybody that has anything uh, maybe new you want to mention, and uh, so we'll pray, and then we'll get Brother Kaiser to jump right up here. Um, Brother Bob. So, so you found her. I remember you were saying they moved her. You don't know where she was. You found her. All right, well, well, that's a praise. That's an answered prayer right there. There you go, Brother Bob. She's in Wilmington. Okay. Okay, well, we will keep Virginia in prayer, Brother Bob. You got for your heart? Okay, we'll pray for that. Okay. All right. Uh, Miss Lisa. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, that is one good, that is a great way to make sure that someone actually comes to church when you invite them and say, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be, there, I'll be there. I'll tell you what, how about I will, I will pick you up, you know, and it's, <laughs> you shouldn't start banging at that door. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> you need Jesus. <laughs> uh, Miss Monique. Okay, we'll pray. Pray. Jose. All right. Uh, yes. He shot him? This is your, you said your, 
Sister-in-law's son. Okay. Well, he's still alive. He. Okay. Okay. Pray for him. Okay. Is there anybody else? Uh, yes, Kim. Unspoken. Okay. Okay. Ready for the exam. Brother Raul. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll keep her in prayer. All right, was there anybody else? Uh yes. Yeah. Amen and amen. Okay. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that we get to be here in church. God, I pray that you'd move in. I pray you'd take over this service. And Lord, I pray you'd bless the, the morning service as well. Pray you'd fill uh, Brother Kaiser with the Holy Ghost and use him. Lord, for anyone that, that comes today that isn't saved, I pray that you'd save them. Lord, I, I pray for these two bus moms that Lisa's going to grab. I pray that they'd be ready and on time. And Lord, I just pray that you'd get them here. I pray that they would show up. And God, we know the devil's going to fight against it. So God, I pray that you would just remove all distractions and, and just make a way, Lord, and help them to get here. Lord, I pray for uh, Brother Raul's wife. I pray that you'd help her and give her grace with uh, with her mother-in-law. And I just pray you'd help them to make the right decision there. Pray that you would give wisdom and, and grace. Lord, I pray for um, Miss Monique's mom. I pray that you would help her legs, Lord. I pray you'd help them to, to work better and, and to feel better. And Lord, I pray that she wouldn't have to get surgery on her other hip. I pray that you would just work in that situation and help. Lord, I pray for Brother Jose trying to get in the school. I pray that you would just work in that situation. I pray that you would um, open up whatever door you'd like him to go through and close the rest. And uh, Lord, I pray for Kimberly with her unspoken request. Please help her. And uh, Lord, I pray you'd uh, be with her tomorrow for her exam. I pray that she would do exceedingly well, Lord. And and I pray that that uh, that folks would know that there's a difference in her because of you. And I uh, pray you'd use her testimony there at school. I pray you'd help her to be a witness, Lord. God, I pray for Brother Bob's um, uh, sister-in-law, Virginia. I pray that you would help her. I pray that you would um, uh, help Brother Bob with his with heart issues as he's going to the doctor for that. And uh, Lord, I pray for his sister-in-law's son that's in, in jail now, Lord. And for many people, they need to get behind bars in order to be free. So God, I pray that you would save him and I uh, pray you'd wake him up. Just show him his need for Christ. And uh, Lord, please meet with us now. And we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Kaiser. Supposed to have the thing on for me already. I think the sound people need to be in purgatory or something. You know what I mean? Like, what in the world, Jay? I hate messing with the buttons. You know what I'm saying? Like, really? Does he not know me by now? Should. Oh, uh, you're getting old too. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Brother Andrew was getting old. He's forgetting verses, and he's not even that old. There is candy in the back. And I will bring, I'll get, I'll get regular. I, the problem is I don't want to bring all the chocolate out because then the kids will clean it up. Yeah. But I do have all kinds of chocolate. And that's, I'll bring them and give it to Miss Ruthie and have her in charge of the chocolate. 
Okay, that's how she rolls, amen? I don't know why the kids didn't grab any of that out of the back of the car. I'm thinking as soon as they went in there, you, I know I gave you a list. I gave Ruthie a list. So I was thinking when they start looking, when they start looking in the back, they're going to say, because they have containers. Ca containers. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 14, please, if you'll turn there. I'm going to do a Sunday school lesson this morning, and, and uh, I have to ask myself this all the time. What kind of disciple are you? I, I don't know. Sometimes in life, when you're saved for a little while, you begin to think that you know everything. Now, I know you never do that, but I do. And then Lord slaps me upside my head, and then I'll see something in the Bible like, where'd that come from? <laughs> to remind me that you don't know everything. Hello. Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse number 25. I'm going to read 27, and I'm going to read 33. I appreciate JR, because if I send him stuff, he puts it on the screen. I mean, like, please. He is the man into the plan. He was working on his house yesterday. I wasn't getting a response from him. He let me know why, because he was working on his house. Amen? Because I get a little nervous when people don't text you back. There are some people you have phone numbers of who never respond to you. Can I ask you a question? Why do you have a phone? Hello? Like I have 3,826 contacts in my phone. It doesn't take much to put a thumbs up. Hello? That you responded. I do have a couple more Squishmallows back there if you want one. I don't have any more of the Hello Kitty. I gave that one to Kira. Oh, wow. Now she done took your Squishmallow from you? Look, what's the matter with you? Did she take your squishmallow? Oh, she was just holding it. Okay, all right. I'm starting a, I'm starting a problem here. Anyway, it's okay. That's how I roll. So, so we're going to read these uh, two verses, three verses, and then we'll get into the Sunday school lesson. Let's, let's pray for us first. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. I pray you'd uh, be here from heaven today, and I pray you'd speak to my heart today and uh, help us to never be in a place where you can't teach us and help us as we learn what we learn is to teach others i pray wash me and cleanse me with your blood from all my sin uh, be with the preacher and his family is there a way i pray hedge and protect them now in jesus name amen luke 14 beginning verse number 25 and there went great multitudes with him and he turned and said unto him if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, that's, that's some pretty strong stuff. Now, there are some, some family members we'd like to forget about. I'm just saying. <laughs> but <laughs> the Bible says you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. But we would like to forget some people like that. But in God's economy, what he's trying to say is, you need to love me more than everybody else. So here's my question. Do you love somebody more than you love God? Now, I want, I want, I want, I'm going to bring you back to square one here. Watch right now. If that's the case, then you're not a disciple. Now, I want you to think about this. <laughs> you think about these people who follow Jesus. Did they really ever get it? I mean, his 12, closest 12, hello, didn't get it. And then I say, they didn't get it, but they didn't have all this. And I got all this, and I don't get it. Hello? You better check out what you got. Amen? Here we go. Verse 27, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Well, wait, wait, wait a second. I thought when I got saved, it was supposed to be easy. 
What Bible did you read? All those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen, I am driving two different vehicles this morning because of the demons. I am always attacked. I, I had a car, which was a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay? Overland. I mean, like, like nice. And the screen goes blank during the summit. No electricity working. Windows won't come down. It's 100 degrees. Thank God I had a moonroof so I could open up the, to let a little air in there. And I had my two grandsons with me. And I had JJ with me. Come on in. We're, we're all in here. You want to hear anyway. They, you're going to hear through the door anyway, so you might as well come in. Anyway, so, so I called a dealership up. I said, look, I got, I, this car is like brand new. I got like, like 9,000 miles on it. They said, well, you can't. I said, I'm, I'm, the summit's done Friday. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it on Friday. They said, no, you, you, you can't come for two and a half weeks. I said, no, I know everybody. Get the manager. I bring gift cards to people. Come on, I buy them lunch. Do you know why? So when I need a favor, they get me in. <laughs> there was a method to my madness. Hello. And they said, okay, bring the car in on Friday. Not two and a half weeks later, Friday. So I bring the car in. I'm there 9.30. I'm there for two and a half hours. They said the car's good. We upgraded. We took care of all the computer stuff, whatever. Okay. I drive 15 miles away, and it does the same exact thing. Now, now I call the salesman. Jerry Crunk. I say, Jerry, I said, I would really like to drive this car through the dealership windows. But I won't do that because I am a Christian. But in my mind is what I'd like to do. I said, now have me another car ready. If the payments are a little bit up, just a little bit, I'm good. But I'm not sitting all day in the dealership. So now I'm driving a newer car. One month old, Brother Andrew, one month old. They had to replace the radio. What? No, so, so, so watch, watch, watch. So God reminds me. If people are getting saved and lives are getting changed, do you expect no opposition? Hello. So just get ready for the ride. And just let me help you here, okay? Before the Lord comes back, it's going to get worse. I'm like, I'm not looking forward to it, but that's what's going to happen. Okay? All right. That was a commercial break. All right. That was a commercial break. That was off the side road. Okay? All right. Here we go. Verse 33, and then we'll get into the lesson. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So I was thinking this. So, so, so do you remember Peter? He said the Lord, like the Lord's talking about people when they do things for him and give up what they give, that they get rewards. And Peter said, well, well, you know, like we left everything. Like, like, like Peter was the kind of guy who would normally insert foot into mouth. Like I'm like Peter. Like sometimes I don't think before I speak. Hello. And so... Oh. And, and the Lord said, no, what you gave up, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some th now, now listen very carefully to me. Your life might not be perfect, but if you're saved here today, this is just temporary. Hello. Because one day we're going to live in glory for all eternity. Woo! I'm telling you what, streets of gold, I, I just can't even visualize it even though I read it in the Bible. But a better day's coming. Oh, come on. Yeah, glory. All right, first thing I want to look at, and the first thing, if we're going to be the right kind of disciple, number one, you have to forgive like Jesus does. Ooh. 
All right, Matthew 6.15, please. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a hard time forgiving people. Now, I know you never do, but I do. Go to verse 14. For if ye forgive their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. What? So do you know that I have to forgive you? Now watch, here, here you go, watch this. Do you know you have to forgive somebody and have the right attitude before they mess with you? Because if you don't have the right heart and the right attitude before they do something to you, Right away, you're going to cop an attitude. Right. Yeah, Let me tell you, you know, when I cop an attitude, when I drive, do you know how much I drive? 50,000 miles a year. Okay. Do you know what I have a problem with? People can't drive. Now you got maniacs driving like 90. I had people today, like on my back, I mean, just on my bumper, and they're trying to go like 80 and 90 miles an hour. Hello? So sometimes I have a problem. Sometimes I want to help them out with my vehicle. Sometimes I want to draft them with my big sprinter rig and help them out in Jesus' name. And the Lord said, and what kind of Christianity is that? Why can't you just let me alone right now? So let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in your mind and your heart that you have a problem with? That you're still bitter about? That you've never forgiven them? That happens a lot of times when somebody's getting ready to die. And I don't know about you, but one day we're all going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to give an account of what good or bad has been done. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the Lord hanging on the cross in Matthew chapter 27. So he's got two thieves. If you read the account in the beginning of that account, both of the thieves are railing on him. But something changes with the guy on the right side. You, you, you want to talk about a last minute salvation? Hello? And then he asked the Lord, he said, you know, watch, watch, watch. He said, remember me. He didn't have time to get baptized. He didn't have time to go meet with a counselor to get saved. Hello? He believed it in his heart from a place where he was, where he deserved to be. But the other thief, he could care less. The problem is he spent an eternity somewhere today. So let me ask you a question today. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And you have to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I'll talk about that in the morning service. But, but 1 John 1, 9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness. All of it. Aren't you glad today when, when the Lord forgives you, he never brings it up? Do you know who brings it up? God. No, it ain't God. The devil. Now, you listen very carefully. When you're going through things in your life and you've got problems going on and you're, you're in trials and it feels like when you look at the next thing, like, like when is this going to end? Like when I'm going through something, I want it to end yesterday. But God is the only one who knows the end. We only see the beginning. So I want it to be done yesterday. But God says... You know what? You need to be here a little longer. 
In Luke 23, 32 through 34, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they departed his raiment and cast lots. What? Come on, come on, come on. I'd be like the disciples. Why don't you just call down fire from heaven? Hello? But he's from the cross, being beaten. 39 stripes. They could beat you 39 times because 40 would kill you. Sometimes you do 38, 39. And then getting your face plummeted so much so that they can't recognize what you look like. Like the worst boxing match you've ever seen in your whole entire life. And he forgives them? Whew, wow. I don't know about you. That's pretty deep. Forgive us. Number two is forbear. Have patience with people. Wow. Hello. John 13. I'm going to do a couple little illustrations. Somebody's in the nursery, but I'll use her this morning too. John 13. <sighs> 34 and 35. Forbear, have patience with people. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Why, why do you have to say that twice? <laughs> you know, I don't know about you. Do you go to church sometimes and you have like selective hearing? And you say, well, that's good for him or her. Right, 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 right. But God's trying to talk to you about it. True. I live there a lot. And the Lord said, no, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. <sighs> 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have lo love one for another. Now, I don't know. So, so I go to Bible college. Um, I'm in my senior year of Bible college, and they had me sit with Pastor Penichetti, sustainer's banquet. And that's to meet with people who might want somebody to come work on staff. So he sits at my table, and we sit and talk. And he says, uh, he said, what are you looking to do? I said, well, I'm really looking to work with youth. And I'm looking to work in the bus ministry. He said, well, I don't know if you're the guy. He said, but we've been praying and fasting for God to send somebody by. So I'm in Indiana. It's 825 miles to Philadelphia from where I was. So he said, I would like for you to come and do vacation Bible school for us. Now, at the time, I worked at Hefzibah House for a year, and then I went to Bible college for four years. And these girls at Hefzibah House got this crazy idea for my wife to get pregnant. So they prayed for her to get pregnant. There's only one problem. There's 10 years between my boys. A little bit out of the diaper stage. <laughs> By the way, I never changed. I only changed one kind of filter. That was the one that was wet. The other one could stay, and it could run down the legs, because all I'm doing is spraying. I am not changing that filter. I ain't changing it. Because it's always nasty and it's always running. I'm not changing it. No, I never did. And don't think for one minute I'll change yours either. I ain't doing it. No, I ain't doing it. I'm not called to change diapers like that. Amen? So they pray for my wife to get pregnant. And she gets pregnant, junior in Bible college. And she decides, because, you know, kids never come at the right time. She decides that she's going to have the baby when I'm getting ready to take finals. Now, uh, when I say she's out there, she'd be out there. Like, my wife used to get 
fat everywhere. Like, I am so glad. I am so glad that I'm not a woman. And I would not forget after the pain I went one time through it that I'd have no more kids. Hello? Girls are a little doo 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 doo. They get that little baby and say, oh, what happened? You're, you're crazy. <laughs> Something wrong with you. Mentally wrong with you. I have more than one child. So I go and I, I, he's telling me to come there. I'm getting ready to finish my finals. My wife said, just go ahead and go. And when you come back, we'll go to the hospital. I take my finals, and she's ready to have the baby in the house. That is a big problem. There's 14 steps to walk down from where my apartment is. I have two vehicles. One's a truck and one's a car. You know which one only has gas? The truck. And we bump all the way to the hospital. Now, I'm talking about for, for bear and have patience with people. That's why I'm at this route. So I've never been to the hospital before. My wife said, you go here. So I go here. So, so I go in, and I do not know, but this is where everybody checks in. I'm supposed to be at the emergency department, but I'm not there. I'm at the check-in. I go to this lady. I said, my wife's having a baby. She sends me upstairs. Meanwhile, my wife is in the truck. She's about ready to have the baby inside the truck. She's banging on the window for people. I go all the way upstairs. I go upstairs, and I tell the nurse, I said, my wife's having a baby. She said, where at? I said, in the truck. What are you doing up here? <laughs> Hello, they sent me up here. When I come down, there's a 70-year-old lady pushing a 235-pound lady in a wheelchair up a ramp. So then I go back to where my wife's going to have the baby. Then they make the phone call that somebody's got their truck parked in the front up here. They need to move it right away. By the time I got there to move the truck and get back, the baby was already born. Had to have a C-section. I said all that to say this. Could you imagine being married to me? You want to talk about patience? Are you serious? Oh, my soul. Are you kidding me? Me? So I said this, let me give you a couple verses and I'll, I'll give another illustration. Uh, Ephesians 4.2 says this, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Colossians 3.13 says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. So, so I come... Pastor says, uh, can you come and do vacation Bible school? So 825 miles. Do you know how much money he promised to give me? Double goose eggs. Do you know there's tolls? Do you know I'm a college student? Do you know I'm working a full-time job? I'm paying a college bill. I'm also paying a, paying, paying a Christian school bill. And now I got a new baby. Hello? No money. So I'm, I'm there. I'm doing vacation Bible school. Thursday, I don't know if God wants me here. Thursday, I, way back when, in Aramingo Avenue, Kmart was still open. It's a lot of years ago. So I go to Kmart, and the Lord said, okay, I want you to come here. So I tell Pastor Panchetti, I'm going to come there. And he goes and puts it up to vote on Sunday, and they vote me in. Like, like, 90, 90, like 99%. But there was one lady. Frank knows where I'm going with this. It was Frank's mother. She thought I was the Antichrist. She said, who comes to a church? And when they come to the church, we just met the guy, and now he's going to work on staff. Where did this guy come from? Hello? You want to talk about having patience with people? And then the lady he's married to, Kim, she came to my youth activity one time with Jeanette Mulholland. And she told me, you're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> Hello? I said, well, now I guess you ain't going to be here at this youth group. She said, I'll just go home. I said, I brought you here. I will take you home. 
And then not too far from here, down the road a little ways, I picked up the Shipley family. They were at K&A, right there in the back road back there. I picked them up on the bus route. Can, can I help you here? And I'll, I'm going to close. Listen, listen very carefully to me. When you work with people, you can't ponder and think where they are. You have to pray and think where they could be. Because if you focus on where they are, you'll get frustrated. But God's got a different plan. And I'm looking at people in here. I can remember the first time we knocked on doors in this place. Hello. Like, but you have to have the attitude that, that you have to have patience. Hello. And people will push your little buttons. Like going to pick up that lady's those bus ladies, and go knocking on their door, they might not be ready. Hello? So I'm finished. So where are you at? Are, are you the kind of person that, that you forgive somebody before they even mess with you? I'll, another illustration. i got a couple minutes here. So I was working at Bethel Baptist Church. We have one week to get this project done. One week. One week. Okay. One week. So I have all these guys helping me. We're working through the night. So, so I have one, I have this fellow, one fellow, and all he wants to do is drink coffee and eat donuts and do no work. Do you know how much patience I want with a guy like that? I want to choke his little neck. Hello. Don't come to the work party and stop my people working, okay? I, I'm okay to have fellowship, but have fellowship while you work. Like whistle while you work? Hello, have fellowship while you work. So I got an attitude. And so the preacher said, uh, Pastor Jesus said, uh, uh, I would like to have you preach on Wednesday. And then the Lord said, I want you to preach on having ought against your brother or your sister in Christ. And you listen very carefully to me. That's a lot of years ago. But I'm standing here today because when I gave the invitation, I had to leave where I was and go ask the guy to forgive me who didn't even know I had a problem with. Listen to me. That's a whole different kind of Christianity today because we like do stuff and excuse it when God ain't about it. And we just think it's okay. No, it ain't okay. It's not okay. And I had to make it right that day. And I really believe this, honestly. God knows my heart. I'm standing here today because of that. Because if I didn't make it right that day, I wouldn't be here today. I'm finished. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you. Help me to be a disciple like I should. Help me to forgive people like I should. And most of all, Lord God, help me to have patience with people. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.